What's up, my fellow Homo sapiens? How's evolution treating you? Enjoying that pattern seeking brain? Ah, oh, good. Me neither. With the upcoming release of the latest installment in the Planet of the Apes series right around the corner, I thought I would give my two cents on speculative evolution, so to speak. I know it seems that primates have this whole dominant species thing on lock. We can't just graze over some of the other intelligent species that could one day give us a run for our money. In this video, we'll be exploring a world where humans have died out, either due to our own hubris or a giant rock. But nonetheless, a world without humans, and who or what is going to take our place as the next owners of Earth. Essentially, this video is asking, who's next? Okay, so first things first, we do have to address the elephant in the room. As you may be aware, sentience, as we humans experience, is not the end goal of evolution. We're a fluke, an anomaly. Things aren't inherently going to walk on two legs and evolve to use tools, because it's not the natural state of that species. It's only because of a million things lining up that we turned out the way we did. We're speculated to have gained intelligence through adaptations, or in other words, those who had intelligence got to pass their genes because that trait was desirable to other intelligent humans, who were being killed a lot less. Do that dance for millions of years and bam, you get what we have today, walking, talking, homo sapiens. Some say evolution for the human race was stagnated because in shorter terms, everyone gets to and be now. We're all reproducing. Is it nice to have a mate who can do taxes and advanced tool usage? Yes but it's not a requirement for you or your offspring's survival. Others speculate evolution occurs in leaps and bounds due to external forces. If it gets cold, like ice age cold, really fast, then those with higher natural body temps, hair, etc., will be able to spread their genes before, you know, dying. I'd say it's probably a mix for both. Human intelligence is still a sought after trait, and not everyone lives in the bubble of a first world country where we can just pick mates willy nilly. Smart people, or what we currently consider smart, seem to do better in life. For animals, humans are the ice age, or in other words, that major event that leads to the evolution of the species. A little depressing, but a good example of this is a pizzly bear. Don't you mean grizzly bear? Well, I would if I was talking about them. Now shut up. Due to the impact humans have had on the climate, polar bears from the north are coming further south and meeting up with grizzly bears. These two separate bears combine to make a pizzly bear. In broad view, the pizzly bear is a notably distinct example, but in reality, humans have altered the evolutionary track of every species on Earth through one way or another. Even our conservation efforts offset what species are supposed to be around and what aren't, because in short, we don't know what's naturally being phased out because of our all-encompassing nature, so it's better to try and save every species. With the lack of humans in our scenario, it presents a unique opening for every other species that's essentially been suppressed during our stint in power. So with us gone, let's go through a list of, as we've said, who's next? Starting us out is the most obvious, primates, or apes, more generally. The smartest of this little subsect of mammals are what we call orangutans, but other apes like chimpanzees and their distant cousins bonobos aren't far off either. These creatures are shockingly close to humans, with our shared DNA having 99% in common, and boy, does it show. Apes have a highly sophisticated lifestyle. They communicate both verbally and non-verbally. Apes are highly social creatures similar to us people, and have shown higher levels of function through their use of tools. Additionally, apes also know how to lie and manipulate one another. A woman by the name of Dr. Jane Goodall became famous for her work with these majestic creatures. Through her research, Goodall found several groundbreaking discoveries that only demonstrated how close we really are, and how eerily similar their path to evolution reflects our own. Apes are shown to follow social hierarchies as well as a greater societal awareness with other apes. Incredibly emotional and sensitive creatures, apes will show signs of mourning at the loss of members in their groupings. They also adopt orphans in so many words to raise as their own. Apes have also been shown to use tools to assist in obtaining food, as well as going to war with other groups. Goodall once recounted her experience witnessing the ape war, where she observed barbaric savagery to the point that the parents ate their offspring. This would be called the Gombe Ape War if you want to look more into this. Where apes lack our direct intelligence, they more than make up in physical strength and ability. 
Apes have more of a particular type of muscle fiber that allows for intense raw explosive strength, about 1.5 to 2 times greater than that of a human. We're great at endurance running, it's one of our buffs up there with language, but if a gorilla catches you, consider yourself dead. Despite their impressive physical stature and skills, apes also show a propensity to learn. Coco the gorilla, born in the 1970s, was an extraordinary example of ape learning capacity, taking on sign language, even being able to express her wants and desires through nonverbal language. If somehow, apes survive an event that takes out humans, I think it's only a matter of time till we see Humans the Redux Season 1. Moving on, let's take a deep sea dive into our local oceans and see who waits for us there. Oh, well would you look at that? It's an octopus, and he's tending to his garden. While not as easily comparable as ape intelligence, octopi have a lot of qualities that place them high up on the list. Their use of appendages to navigate the ocean floor are great environmental adaptations. They use these tentacles to extract shellfish for food, and have been shown to even be able to solve mazes and puzzles. Octopi have a unique brain structure that is so alien to humans that we still don't know how to accurately test their intelligence in comparison to ours. Their brain goes throughout their entire body, with each limb or tentacle having a slight degree of independence, all working together to make this cephalopod move and dance. However, octopi do have some factors working against the species, namely, their shut-ins. Octopi don't interact with one another as they're not social creatures, and about every major predator in the ocean you can think of likes to feast on these fellows. Which could be a good thing if we were looking for smarter octopi, but it could also keep the population numbers well in check. I thought that the Octos made a worthy contender because if they can solve mazes, who's to say they're not on track to use tools and defend themselves, or begin using their camouflage as a form of communication amongst each other. Speaking of predatory aquatic animals, let's move on to the next one. Despite living in the ocean, dolphins are some of the smartest mammals next to humans. Dolphins, in case you're new on Earth, live in the ocean. They look like fish, but they're not. Fish are relatively dumb at being people. But they're sure great at being fish, I mean, look at this. Dolphins are all queued up to take the stage as our next contender. Big selling points are, they're social creatures and they do a little something called communication. The most intelligent of these dolphin species is known to be called a bottlenose. Bottlenose dolphins have a few things going for them over the rest of dolphin kind. Bottlenose dolphins are said to have the most advanced speech patterns, as well as a demonstration and willingness to use tools. These particular dolphins will use the sea sponges to protect their snouts and dig up food on the sea floor. Through my research, I've noted two needed traits to put you on track for being a higher evolved species. These two traits, I argue, are an ability to communicate with a social grouping, and the willingness or desire to use tools, albeit even if those tools are other organisms. To further our discussion on dolphins, let's take a look at another scientist and what their discoveries unearthed on these flippered friends of ours. Margaret Lovett was living in the Caribbean and had been working on various experiments and tests regarding dolphins. It was in 1964 Lovett's career would receive a serious reputation boost. NASA, wanting to prepare for the possibility of discovering extraterrestrial life, built this crazy lab called the Dolphinarium, where they would try and teach dolphins a human language. This was to prepare for the language of the aliens we had not found yet. So instead of trying to learn or understand aliens, we instead wanted to teach the aliens English. Unfortunately, after some unethical behavior by the research team, the project never availed to any substantial success. Oh, you want to know of the complications? Well, Lovett worked closely with a male dolphin by the name of Peter. Peter would have urges that interrupted the lessons and Dr. Lovett in an attempt to progress further would satisfy these urges, scientifically. The news media would catch wind of this, and you know how that goes. Additionally, Lovett's boss, John Lilly, was working on another experiment involving LSD, and was documented to be administering the new experimental drug to the dolphins. The LSD seemingly had no effect, but it is interesting because if you're familiar with the stoned ape theory of evolution, then it's not a crazy reach to think maybe something new would happen. The theory of the stoned ape states humans in a protostate gained sentience because of our ingestion of psilocylin mushrooms. These mushrooms, giving us imagination and thought, turned us into what we are today. Though not a hallucinogenic, some dolphins are known to take a little nibble out of pufferfish because their neurotoxins are known to act as a type of narcotic to the mammals. Besides some one-off fumbles on our part, dolphins are extremely intelligent creatures. 
showing problem-solving skills, an ability to mourn as well, they feel a wide array of emotional spectrums and they can think in abstracts, as well as being able to conceptualize betrayal and other more intricate concepts. If the land is no longer suitable for life, then the oceans may be the next place we see our super species emerge. This next one is pretty interesting, maybe even the most interesting. We move back to land only to go into a hive. What's in this hive? Well, it's bees. A bunch of them too. Yes, you heard me right. Bees. You probably don't think about bees too often, but these little fellows are some of, if not the smartest creatures of all insects. First off, let's take a look at those two big factors I mentioned earlier. Let's see if bees are social creatures by asking one. Yep, they're social all right, but do they use tools? Bees kind of use tools, more so, they're in their stone age, using raw materials to make things, rather than using the raw materials to make things to help make things, you dig? Bees show tremendous innovation, they even know how to count and be trained to do other tasks like recognize human faces. These little guys have a complex form of communication, on a much higher level than that of most animals. Through a series of nonverbal expression like odors and body movements, Bees can communicate a vast array of information like where to find food, encroaching predators, and what a unionized goal should be. United goals like building a hive. Bees have a natural instinct to build hives, placement being determined on factors like temperature, surrounding pollen density, airflow, etc. Bees produce wax with a gland on their abdomen. It takes roughly six pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. A huge benefit going for bees and I guess all insects is that they evolve way faster than us mammals. Shorter lifespans mean faster reproduction, which means faster adaptation. This also means that bugs are really well off when it comes to the need for sudden adaptations following a change in environment. Bees, as great as they are, do have some weak points. Bees answer to a queen, an almost subspecies of regular bees. These queen bees are in charge of giving off pheromones to unite the hive and more importantly, lay as many eggs as possible. Queens are the only female bees in the hive with fully developed ovaries, meaning that they are the sole bearers of the hive's population growth. If a queen is killed, it could very well mean certain death for that unlucky hive. Additionally, queen bees are not friendly to another. When a queen is nearing death either because of old age or illness, the hive will begin a contingency plan to install the next new queen. When the new queen is born, she will kill the old one. This is going to create a problem when bee groups encounter each other, as even if they're running the show of their own hive, it's hardwired into queen bees to kill each other. With all that talk of bees, we move on to our finale. Can I get a drum roll, please? The next species to inherit the earth will be... No one. Yep, that's right. If we went missing tomorrow, most likely things would just go on without a resurfacing of what we deem as sentient life to our level. Environments would begin to heal, with the natural dominant apex predators taking the top of the food chain. The world would go on as it did for a majority of history, with uniquely intelligent animals in their own right acting as what we've come to separate ourselves from. If I had to speculate, there'd probably be an emergence of new species to fill niches humans have kept closed off, either through terraforming our planet for our needs, or that we've driven to extinction. And though it is possible that all the animals I've talked about in this video could be forming vast super civilizations in millions of years, the chances of such a feat are very slim, if anything at all. You have to remember, dinosaurs, any dinosaurs at the peak of the Triassic period, weren't trying to build farms and begin an agrarian revolution. It was just another ecosystem without humans. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. I'd be really interested in hearing what animals you think be on the path to sapience, so let me know in the comments down below. With all that said, I'm Gideon, and peace out.